Hello everyone, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to Autry, my dear moments. We are in school and school is in sad shape, as is the rest of this lovely town. But, you know, what do you expect? But the school is literally in terrible shape. It is, it is awful all around, not just physically, but how it is also operating. They don't even have a teacher. Their class size is probably even smaller than that of what was in the Fruit of Grisaya. It's, it's pretty sad. Or actually, it's probably maybe one or two more. I don't know. There's like three kids. Then there's the gal that we met in the very beginning. Some dude that's pissed off at us. Then there's us. And I don't know if we're necessarily a student, but we are here. Maybe it's equal. Maybe it's more so equal. Either way. Oh, and then there's Autry, of course. Before I know it, the sinking sun is bathing the classroom in a golden hue. That's our bell. Minamo walks over to the teacher's desk and rings a small handbell lying on top of it. I guess that must be the closest thing they have to a school bell here. Looks like it. Oh yeah, the kids all think that we're uh, evil. Except for Child C. Child C is cool. The younger children are all lying flat out on their desks with dead glassy eyes. That is unfortunate though, because... You obviously want the kids to have a great education, but the, you know, state of the world is not all that great. And you're trying your hardest because education can go far. You never know what you could utilize when you, what you actually do learn in school. What's up with those kids? I hate it when, uh, any, any anime character has those, you know, just empty eyes. Minamo's eyes have lost some of their sparkle too, and now that I notice... <laughs> Maybe it was a little much to assume you'd be able to make up for a whole month in one day. I got so engrossed in teaching that I kind of lost track of time. I kind of forgot that that's what we were doing here in the first place. Also, sorry if there's like loud moments. I'm trying to like, you know, catch them and see. Okay, all right, like. Whose volume do I need to lower next or whatever, but like, damn. I hate it when visual novels just don't have that perfect audio mix. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's something I wanted your help with, Mitomo. To be honest, there's a certain something absolutely essential that I'm going to need if Autry's going to be living with me, and Minamo's the only person I can ask. Wait, what's that? What do we absolutely need? What's going on here? We start on our way home. Okay, we're just walking along. Autry holds my hand and kicks her bishooed feet up, up proudly with each step. Excuse me. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see her cowlick bobbing up and down. I'm glad that we're giving it so much attention. Usually in anime, whenever, you know, characters have like the antennas or whatever, it's usually just, you know... Not ever focused on, never brought up whatsoever. She puffs out her chest. You really did work hard. You're a quick learner, that's for sure. And it's not simply because she's a robot either. Humanoids might be well suited to mathematical equations, but they're not normally, or they are normally not great with cultural and social subjects. Yet Autry worked hard and learned well. She was so enthusiastic that I think a little of that ended up rubbing off on me. Well, you know what they say. I mean, you want positive people in your life. You want positive people around you. If it's just negative people, then it's just going to be a sucky time. Well, if I feel like it. I look over at her smiling face. Walking home from school holding a girl's hand might not be so bad. I don't think I ever imagined doing this. Not since my mom died, at least. I never imagined doing that. Holding hands with a woman? Nah, no way. I was so focused on studying to get into the academy, and then on staying here. I don't remember ever having a single moment as carefree as this back then. 
I'm only holding her hand because she's supposed to, you know, act as my leg, of course. She has to stay close to support me. I suppose this is how it's going to be for a while. A relaxed existence, with no goal in sight, without feeling the need to study every waking moment of the day. It's almost like a long belated summer holiday. We are in deep thought. No. What? She's so, like, unserious and serious in the same way. It's, it's ridiculous. Those regulations hardly matter these days. Humanoids haven't been built in years, and with so few remaining after the Great Sea Rise, enforcing all the laws concerning them isn't exactly a priority for the cops. If the cops are even around. Wait, I've never kissed you. That wasn't a kiss. That wasn't a kiss. Come on. That was the episode one thumbnail material, though. That was that was a pretty cool scene. I will admit, that was a very nice CG. Uh, wait, no, that was CPR. Yeah, you know, what can we say? What can I say? And the one saying this is a robot. She shrugs and sighs. I know what a kiss is. No. Well, uh... Atri peers up with an inquisitive expression on my face, or at my face, which is burning red. For a moment I'm speechless and it takes all I have to stutter out a reply. That's got nothing to do with you. Ah, this damn annoying heap of scrap. Anyway, are you any good at housekeeping? I mean, supposedly that was her job before, you know, she went into her deep slumber. The majority of humanoids are intended for domestic services. The whole reason they're designed to look human is to blend in with the family. Naturally, that means they're equipped with all the skills they need to keep a house clean. Ah, that's a relief. Doing any kind of housework is difficult with this leg. If she wants to be its replacement so much, that's the least I can ask for. <laughs> Good morning, food poisoning. We all know it's coming. Better to embrace it and expect it. Nah, I'm sure we'll be okay. It'll probably just taste terrible. Knowing Audrey, I, I really don't know, you know? Look, that's enough. Jeez, just stop. Guys, I think she's being the opposite of helpful. A great tumult of crashing and bashing comes from the ship. Bickering is probably the uh, the better term to use here. Well, wait, what's going on? Forcing her way into the cabin, Minamo sets her eyes on the mayhem within. The floor is littered with broken plates and cups. Piles of torn clothes and bedsheets are scattered across the room. It looks like the place has been ransacked. That is the big question here, isn't it? It's all Autry's doing. Beast mode. No, she's just really, really bad at housework. There she goes with the high performance thing again. Shut up. No human makes mistakes this bad, you piece of scrap. Again, what cops? Where are they? 
I grab hold of Autry's head and start to grind my knuckles against it. Again, I don't think that's a problem. Shut your trap. I'm going to throw you back into the sea at this rate. Ah, good old rough love. Well, yeah, the whole place looks like a fucking disaster, probably. If somebody did that to my living residence or wherever I'm living or sleeping or cooking and all of that good stuff, and it was just a disaster, then yeah, yeah, I'd be fucking pissed. I don't know why I didn't just say my home, you know? Why do I have to be specific and weird? A teary-eyed Autry starts to clear up the scattered debris. At least she knows how to clean. Her head whacks into a shelf and a rain of books comes tumbling down on top of her. I take it back. She's not even good for cleaning. I mean, I'm clumsy too. Don't get me wrong. Were you really built to be a maid? Yeah, built to be one probably, but... Why are we getting a flashback to something that was like not even five minutes ago? Where did that confidence go? I, that's why I don't carry confidence with me. I can't believe I actually got my hopes up for a nice dinner. Autry falls to the floor clutching at her heart. Her earlier culinary handiwork wasn't really what I would call dinner. It could hardly even be described as food. In fact, if you found it in a factory's waste chute, the place would get shut down? God damn. Again, the unseriousness and the seriousness is insane here. Again, as I just said, a lot of unseriousness here. No. Atri nods, her expression solemn. Atri brushes away a tear, or at least she would if she actually was crying. Humanoids don't even have the ability to cry, except for the purposes of cleaning their optical receptors. Wait, the fact that she's tying it back into like how things currently are is uh, kind of scary because... Was this actually true? Huh. I didn't know it was possible for humanoids to lie. Oh, never mind. Hey, I wasn't fully committed to it. I was not. You guys can't say I fell for it. I'm just surprised that she was actually tying it back together. I didn't expect you to confess that quickly. Yeah, I believe the last part. And now she's she's super honest about it. She's not holding back. No, those don't tie together. They don't come together in any way here. Wow, she's so high performance that she can even lie to herself. Shame she's not high performance enough to know you generally have to crack an egg before trying to fry it. I mean, you don't... You, well, for frying it, yeah. Scrambling it, yeah. But, I mean, you could boil it. I guess I'm going without dinner, thanks to you. One thing this killer robot has succeeded in destroying is my food stocks. That's rough. We already don't have a whole lot of money as it is. Oh, 
Why's that? Minamo timidly holds out her bag. Oh. Is it really okay for us to have them? Yeah, I don't think we're creeped out by it. I grasp Minamo's hand with a desperate intensity. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've saved my life. Yeah, don't look too don't look too deep into it. You really shouldn't. Oh, come on. Atri points at Minamo. Again, the unseriousness versus seriousness within her is absolutely nuts. Because she'll say all this stuff like, oh yeah, you can't kiss me because that goes against the law or whatever. And then it's like, all right, well, I'm going to go sleep with this man. You're no such thing. Can I eat this already? I am starving. She's a robot. She doesn't need to eat. I mean, she definitely will, though. Why are you eating? Why would a robot need that? You said that you didn't need to eat, didn't you? You don't get any nutrition from it. Oh, well, my thing is that we are in such dire times that food should probably be, you know, a little bit more on the sacred side, you know, not to just be thrown away down a robot's stomach so she can eat the food but not actually do anything with it. Jeez, you must have been built in a pretty de uh, decadent age if you're able to go around wasting food for no reason. That's what I'm saying. What even happens to the stuff you eat? <laughs> oh my god. Atri continues to impress me with just what she... Oh, fuck. Okay, well, I guess Minamo too. Everybody continues to impress me, especially, especially Atri, with just what they end up saying, with where the conversation leads next. How have I ended up saddled with this hunk of junk? Oh, she's not terribly useless, you know? She's friendly, at least. I think the social aspect in this is probably the biggest and will greatly help him. After dinner, Minamo starts sheepishly apologizing. Why are you saying sorry for him? I don't really care. And he has a point, I guess. The subjects I studied at the academy were on a whole different level that didn't need to be capitalized to what you would learn at a regular school. They wanted to create scholars who could contribute to saving the world. Contribute? No, contribute. Okay, well, you know what? It's even, game. It's even. You made a mistake, I made a mistake. It's okay. It's a place where you devote yourself to a higher purpose and pour everything into your research. Or at least, that's what I thought for my first year there. In reality, the place was rife with factionalism and authoritarian ideologies looking down on everyone outside of the school and anyone who couldn't perform to their standards. Not everyone was like that, but you know what they say. One bad apple spoils the barrel. I flunked out of the academy and ended up here. I think there's always a point. Knowledge is still power. Like, when it comes to, you know, architecture, building anything, or, you know, just... I, I you know, My point is math. Math is probably one of the most important things that you can learn in school because it can really tie into a whole bunch of stuff. Like, I work in finance. No fucking shit that math is, you know, a backbone. But before that, I studied computer science. And guess what? Math was a backbone, especially when I was taking the piss-poor computer graphics classes, which uh, tie into, you know, creating games and models and such. There's a lot of trigonometry and shit that goes into it. I would say, you know what? I'm going to say it. Calculus. My fucking worst enemy. 
that goes into it. But it even goes further. If you work in retail, you got to know math, right? You have to. I mean, math can really just be such an integral part to a lot of things. Science, too. Science is actually, I would argue, probably something that you would utilize in your everyday health. Because, well, we're all, we're all very scientific beings, aren't we? The list goes on and on. Being able to read is helpful anywhere. So, yeah, you don't know what you're going to do whenever you're going through elementary, middle, high school, whatever. You don't know what exactly you're going to utilize in your life. And that's kind of why you have to take all these fucking classes that probably don't really, you don't really need to take at the end of the day. But knowing history, knowing, you know, the social studies, sciences, all that, it's, it all comes together. Excuse my fucking rant there. <laughs> Or whatever you want to call it. No, no way. Really? Crazy. I didn't see it coming. I see. No, it looks like a piece of shit. It's literally like partially in the water and nobody attends. Sorry to disappoint, but if anything, I'm surprised that the place still exists. It's half submerged and has a grand total of five students and zero teachers. It hardly even meets the definition of the word school. Well, who's going to close it? What am I supposed to do about that, though? I'm a guy who's just ran away from one educational establishment. Why would I care about another? These pancakes are great. Did you make them? I like how we're just changing the topic, which it's probably for the best. Let's get off the depressing thing. You're just agreeing that they're good. You can't actually taste it. Hey, stop eating those. It's a waste of good food. Are you even able to taste them? No, never mind then. Unless she's lying, of course. I wish she was high performance enough to actually make something worth tasting. A robot with taste testing capabilities, but no skill at actually cooking. Can you imagine anything more useless? I'm not sure where her mother got that impression, given that I've only met her a few times. Well, I guess they are pretty tasty. <laughs> What the fuck? Where's that coming from? Yeah, what the hell? Oh, no, don't, don't point it out. Damn it, you piece of... I can understand Minamo's frustration, but there's nothing I can do about the school. Carrying on the conversation would just be an annoyance. Yeah, that made her sad again. See, she was all happy because we were praising, you know, the food. But now, we're right back to it. Minamo's face is etched with sadness. I'm sorry, I was joking. No, they are, they are. That's what she's so upset about? No, that was true. Say thanks to your mom for me. What? Atri gives her a pitying look. She's more human than we all think, huh? That one's on you. There's no point in a bunch of minors discussing the school closing, is there? That's something adults are going to decide. They're the ones who want to shut down the school in the first place. Even if some kids turn up saying, please keep it open, they're not going to listen. You can plainly see from the fact that we don't have electricity that the powers that be have already given up on this place. 
I take it wherever the mainland is, is uh, bustling a little bit better here. I look out the window toward the town, lying silent beneath the darkening skies. Even as the evening draws in, not a single light is visible. When the seas rose, this area was cut off from the mainland. The rising water caused flooding and landslides, and all of the electricity pylons carrying power to the town collapsed as a result. It's been in the dark since. The government has been or has given up on the low-lying areas that are soon to be completely swallowed up and simply recommend that everyone moves inland. Is it like maybe a money problem that a lot of people are staying here or that they think that they can make some money by being here or maybe there's an attachment sort of deal maybe what's the problem if the school shuts down <laughs> And there aren't any other schools around here? She silently shakes her head. Well, in that case, if they wanted to study somewhere else, they'd have to move. And that's easier said than done these days, when there's just so little land to live on. That's interesting because I don't get that impression off of him, but I understand it. There's a want to have the kids, you know, actually go to school to be able to grow up with that education, but to also keep everybody together, especially if bonds were formed here. Really? He was saying an awful lot about how pointless studying is. He did still come to school though, I suppose, even if he did just sleep all day. I feel the same way he does. If you're going to study, there's no point doing it half-assed. Oh, to be close-minded. That was a long time ago. I'm surprised you remember that. I first met Minamo when I came to live with my grandmother. That was quite some time ago. Oh, we're her inspiration, cool. In the end, it's all been pointless though, right? We can't stop the school closing. Kids like us can't do anything about adult decisions. That's the simple fact of the matter. Stop your whining. If you really want to study, I might be able to help you. We're going to try a science experiment tomorrow, so be ready. Why is he so pumped up for this? Jeez, why are you crying? Ah, uh, yes, with our one leg, we'll definitely be able to save this place. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that I can solve all of your problems. I can just teach everyone a few things. Atri pats the bawling Minamo on the head. It is, I must admit, a very cute sight. Satisfied, I turn my attention back to the food. As we must. Huh, hey, you ate my pancakes! Oh my god. You don't even need it. You don't need the food. Food doesn't even do anything for you. You should at least let me eat my fill first. Oh my god. First you wreck my room and then you eat my dinner. You keep saying that, but your brain just seems like a heap of scrap to me. And we still haven't been arrested. What? That can't be a real law. Shouldn't the three laws of robotics stop you from harming a human? Which was a lie. Okay, then just try it. Do your worst, Toaster. 
Of course, of course. Yeah, lucky us. Get in the sea, now. Watching the two of us argue, Minamo stops crying and says she laughs. Oh, she has, 100%. And that's honestly the shit I love about this story so far. Like, this is some real, real good development. Minamo leans in to whisper something into Antri's ear. More like I can sense a storm coming. Yeah, especially since it gets completely pitch black in this area. I'll walk you back, seeing as it's already dark out. Now you never know. This place has always had a reputation for being safe and peaceful. In part, that's due to the fact that everyone knows each other... It's difficult for outsiders to come here without raising suspicion. Which is probably why a lot of eyes were on him and the, uh, the other gal. Minamo pulls a bundle of folded cloth out of her bag. Thanks, you're a big help. Yeah, I guess that's where we're heading tomorrow. She rushes off looking significantly happier than when she, w than when she had just arrived. Excuse me there. <laughs> there comes a rustle from nearby. See, I told you it's probably dangerous. Oh, never mind, it's a cat. That's a loud ass cat. Uh, no, it's not a cat. I was wondering whenever she was going to pop up again. No, it's nothing. I just thought I heard someone from outside. Yeah, we're fucked. Must have been a passing fisherman or something. About the only people who would ever come around here are me and people who need a quiet place to fish. Anyway, take your clothes off. Oh my god, stop. It wasn't meant like that. And where'd the seriousness go? Idiot, I didn't mean anything dirty by that. Look, I opened the package Minamo brought me. It is, as I told her, something absolutely essential that I'm going to need if Audrey's going to be living with me. That's why I sent her out after school... To fetch me some pajamas for her. What the fuck? Huh? I take another look at the piece of cloth I've just unfolded. Yeah, those are panties. Just what did Minamo think when I said something essential? Atri strips off her dress and puts the present from Minamo over her existing panties. I, I don't know or or care. Oh. Wait. Is it the pants? Is it like... Is that what we have going on here? They actually do suit you. They're a pair of puffy, almost pumpkin-shaped drawers. They couldn't fit Atri any better. It's weird how everything's just been fitting her way too damn well. They're a little different from what I was expecting, but I think Minamo's done a good job all said and done. Yeah, it seems like she likes them too. No, I'm fine. There's a little wind tonight, so I should be okay. She looks disappointed. I guess she was hyped up on pumpkin power. She's like our, our nightlight, you know? She makes an odd gesture, knitting her fingers together below her belly 
and swings side to side, and there the night ends. Supposedly. Where's this uh, Catherine at? She's bound to pop up, right? She's going to steal Autry or whatever. Even so, Autry's the one who kind of just ran away from her. That is what happened. We didn't necessarily steal her. But nope, it's a brand new day. Look at that water. Damn it, I did it again. I gently unwrap a happily snoozing Autry's arm from around mine. We had a rough night, huh? Don't word it like that. Please don't say it like that. What the fuck is with her? I'm starting to think there's actually not even a, a little bit, not even a teeny tiny bit of seriousness within this character. She's just all full of jokes. I have no retort to that. It is admittedly true. I didn't feel the phantom pain last night, but when the radio started to cut out, I got uneasy and pulled, and, and I pulled Atri into bed. Excuse me. Ah. That's nothing. Come on, get your clothes on and get ready for school. Yeah, that woke you up. She snaps awake instantly. With a pang of regret in my chest, I begrudgingly start to get ready. What's what are you doing? Atri stares at me as I put on my prosthetic leg. In a way, it's probably doing him more bad than good, but you know, whatever. That's exactly why I need it for. What's with that look? What is to be jealous about here? First she's angry at it, and then she's envious. It's like she really doesn't think of herself as a leg. What a nice scene, because this is really just the scene that we saw in the very beginning, just with Atri poking out from behind. It might sound strange to say that about a girl who would appear to any random onlooker a completely normal human being, but for a robot, those are entirely valid feelings. A robot's feelings. As AI developed, robots became capable of, of expressing many emotions. Oh yeah, we're, we're getting into some weird territory here in the real world, gamers. I don't know when this was originally released out in Japan. Not too long ago, I'm sure. But goddamn, has AI absolutely blown up. And it's more on the generative side. Obviously, AI has always been around. But now that we have generative AI, where it can do all this crazy shit by stealing people's art, and you can have conversations with it and shit, it's, it's getting nutty. It is getting scary. Some even say that humanoids like Autry actually developed the ability to process and feel emotions just like humans after living together with us for so long. But that's an assertion that I'm more than a little skept uh, skeptical of. Those emotions are simply a result of AI logging and learning to replicate human expressions and behavioral patterns that they've witnessed. I took a class like that, actually. It wasn't necessarily on AI, but it was on machine learning. And that's kind of the idea here. Robots lack the one thing that could make these emotions real. Consciousness. If you can really even call the reactions of an unconscious, unfeeling being emotions. Atri glares at my leg like a cat that's found something it doesn't quite understand. I do that a lot. I think he's okay. No, I'm fine. I reply flatly. The room is still littered with the uh, detritus left over from the last night's travesty. No, please. No thanks, I'd rather eat my last remaining leg. She's still... She's still going with that. You're not a killing machine. You're a glorified toaster, but less good at making toast. Yeah, 
I will admit, I am, uh... I'm very impressed with her ability to run along with the insults that he throws at her. She's really set on this combat robot excuse, isn't she? I, I fucking swear, if this game actually does reveal later down the line in the story that, oh yeah, she was used for military purposes. What the fuck are people doing? Like, I'm, what I mean specifically is that they actually made a cute anime girl into a killing machine. Like, they could have, they could have done things way better, but nope. Cute anime girl is going to save the world. I ignore her and strap on my prosthetic. She doesn't really have the capacity to feel, does she? Sometimes I start to doubt myself around this girl. When something becomes an accepted truth in academia, it can be difficult to con convince anyone that any evidence to the contrary is valid. It's not like I took anything more than the first awkward steps into that world, though. And that kind of thing has nothing to do with me anymore. Whatever specialist knowledge I gain there, it's nothing but useless trivia out in the sticks. <laughs> I think I was disconnected from the internet for a moment or something because I was not on Steam. Everybody just started playing a game all at once. That that fucking that caught my my attention there in the corner. You guys can't see it, but I can. Atri trudges over to where it's hanging on the wall and crosses off another day. Wonder what that was all about. Oh, that's a lot of time to hang out. By the way, did you recover any memories when we went to the school yesterday? God damn it. But of course. Jeez. You know, you've only got until that calendar runs out, right? Not that I really care if you stay or not. Do whatever you like. True. Speaking of which, I wonder what's happened to Catherine. I was sure that she'd have come around here to complain by now. I've not heard a peep from her since Atri walked out on her. I haven't tried to contact her myself either. Why would I? I don't even know where she's staying. Yeah, there, there's no clue on, on my part either. We have zero idea. Atri is the only one who would know. Right, there we go. I push my foot up against the ground, checking my prosthetic leg is properly attached. It might be an old piece of junk, but seeing Atri so jealous... I can't help but feel a strange affection for it. Yeah, what are you fidgeting like that for? Robots don't need to go to the toilet too, do they? Oh my gosh. Oh, we're getting fine now. Cool, cool. Okay then, so? Oh, okay. Interesting request. A robot's actions and any associated feedback are usually recorded in a log. They're useful for troubleshooting in the case of a breakdown or when a robot's undergoing maintenance. Humanoids record these logs by outputting them to an external source. Basically, they write them down. As humanoid brains are based on the same neuron structure as actual human, uh, human brains, excuse me, they're not capable of outputting directly in a digital format like your average computer. So it's necessary to record everything on paper. It's not like it matters, the company that made Atri is long gone. It's like her programming demands it though, so if she doesn't regularly output, she'll get uneasy. That's interesting, actually. We'll buy some on the way to school. <laughs> that is actually pretty interesting. The world building here is is fascinating in a way, you know? Like, it's, it's not much, but, you know, the pieces kind of come together that make things seem very interesting and engaging. But with that, we will end the episode there. I think this is an okay spot. Class meeting, oh boy. Oh boy. Atri the Combat Maid, that was definitely a, uh, that was a pretty truthful fucking title, honestly. That one worked out really well, just in a really unserious way. But anyways, we will uh, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you all for tuning in. I am still considering whether or not I want to continue to record the entirety of this, but it's probably going to be a yes. I'm having a lot of fun with this one. It's chill, and I can tell that it's going to break my heart, and I want you guys to all witness that, because that would be really funny. Um, or maybe it won't, and you guys can be disappointed. I don't know. But I also think recording this while the anime is coming out is just... It's like the perfect time, right? 
Like, yeah, I'm late to the party, but oh well, I'm still here. You know, finally. Not even fashionably late. I'm fucking like, like seven out of the eight hours of the shift have already gone by and here I am finally. Anyways, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.